Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about my work on uh, Fastener Collision Attacks. So this is a joint work with my two uh, PhD uh, directors, Pierre Fouc and Patrick Terpès. So Fastener Collision Attacks are new generic attack against StreamCypher, first introduced at Euroclip 18 by Zhang, Xu and Meyer against Quan V1. And after that, Zhang did another paper for uh, A51 uh, at uh, AsiaClip 19. The basic idea of the fast near collision attack, uh, which is an internal state recovery attack, is a divide and conquer where you split the internal state in two parts. The core parts that you will first search and retrieve with a near collision property and the knowledge of a small bit, what, uh, the knowledge of a small number of the keystream bit. What, very few, very few information on the keystream. And the second part, the rest part, is easily computable from the knowledge of the core part. So in the papers, um, there was extension of the state recovery to key recovery with a very efficient uh, complexity. Uh, for example, for queen uh, V1, uh, there is something like a power two to the uh, two to the power twelve about uh, economy compared to the existing search. And for uh, a one, um, your office computer can normally uh, run the, the attack. We were really happy to, to see that because uh, we wanted to do something else on uh, a one. So we give it to students to implement the attack and uh, as a semester project. And at the end of the semester, for 10 groups uh, that had to well, implement the attack, uh, on, there was only one successful implementation with it. It's not really surprising because the, the attack is really hard to understand with a lot of mathematical uh, details that make it really hard for students, I think. And um, the successful implementation of the attack was really slow and the code wasn't too bad. So we went back to the paper to understand why it was so slow. And uh, going back to the paper, we found uh, errors in uh, the complexity of the core part. So that's what I'm going to present here. So why the core part doesn't work. And so uh, what's the central idea of the core part is uh, the self-refined method, which is a computation uh, split in uh, three phases. So the first phases phase is uh, to compute uh, was well, some variant of a differential distribution table uh, that is uh, called TD. Uh, so basically, TD uh, match a key stream K, a difference on this key stream to good uh, differences in the state. Good differences in the state being defined by being small. And there is one state that will give you the, the key stream that you're searching. And when you add the, this good differences to the, the state, you obtain your near um, key stream. So the key stream added to uh, the differences uh, delta key. After that, uh, after this pre-computation, that is uh, normally uh, you do it once and it's okay. You have the online phase. So the, that's really where the error is. So I'm going to stress uh, the result of this online phase, which is a set X that has a high probability to contain your uh, internal state that will that generate your key stream, the, what you're searching basically. So the idea of the online phase is that you sample at random state that give you a near uh, the near key streams that you that you're studying. And um, you're using your uh, table from the pre-computation phase to add a difference to the state to obtain uh, the good key stream. And after that, you keep the candidate in uh, the set and you do it a lot of time. After that, uh, after the unknown phase, there is uh, something that is called the amplifying phase. Uh, basically, just a repetition and a combination of multiple online phases to increase the probability, uh, but it's not important for us. What's really important is the online phase and the fact that the only things that you use in the online phase is 
uh, the knowledge of the key string. So basically, if you have uh, two states that give you the same key string normally with uh, what you're seeing here, you shouldn't uh, be able to differentiate between these two key strings, well, between these two states. So, and that's really why has this method will not work because as I said, the things that interest us here is the set X at the end and more precisely, the size of the set X and the probability that the good uh, internal state, well, the good core part of the internal set is in the set. And uh, when you watch uh, the attack against Green Tree 1, you're searching for 12 bits of internal state with only the knowledge of two bits of key string. And the claim of the Fastener collision attack is that the set X you obtain with the self refined method has 838 elements and the probability that the good state is in this set is around 90%, which is a lot better than what you would expect uh, if X was sample at random. Um, another suspicious thing uh, with this attack against grain is that at one point, uh, if you see how the key stream is computed, basically it's uh, XOR over f five uh, variable of the internal state and XOR of uh, with XOR of the of an output of a function H, and uh, in the Fastener collision attack, H is taken new. So output of H is taken new. Um, that means that you're already constraining the search space with non, without using the knowledge of the key stream. So we don't know how or why they can do it, but apparently they can. Um, the same thing is done with uh, a 5 one uh, Basically, they're searching for 15 bits of internal state with only two bits of keystream, uh, well, with uh, only uh, knowledge of two bits of keystream. And the claim of the Fastener collision attack is that the set X you obtain after the self refined method contains 7,835 elements, and the probability that the good value, well, the good internal set is in the set, should be more than 99%, which is better, once again, than what you would expect if X was uh, taken at random. And uh, the claim that we have with this work is that those probability are false. Uh, basically, because you cannot differentiate between a good and a bad uh, internal state that will give you the same key string. Uh, this is uh, said a bit more uh, formally uh, with a simple uh, information theory uh, argument. So if you have the algorithm A, that will be the self-refined method, that takes as an input a function F, the stream cipher, and uh, some elements that will be the key stream, and it outputs a subset of uh, the antecedent of the key stream by uh, the stream cipher, and you're searching, uh, you're watching, you're observing the probability that one particular value is in this set, when it's taken like at random from the antecedent, the probability that this value is in the, is in the set X, sorry, uh, should be about the size of X divided by the size of all antecedent uh, of, of your value of your key stream. So the, the self refining method verifies the hypothesis of this theorem. Must be. Uh, I'm going back to that. Uh, uh, just a bit later, but the self refined method verified this hypothesis. So the probabilities that are given the last slide should be false. There's, there is no way that they're right. And a simple experiment to, to prove that uh, this probability is false is to first choose uh, a key stream value, run the self refined method to obtain a set X, and only now choose a secret one, an internal state, a good internal state that will give you the key stream, and you check if this internal state is in the set. Um, as I said, uh, the self refined method 
verify this hypothesis with uh, this little detail that we think that the key, well, the, the value uh, xs of the internal state should be sample at random in the antecedent of uh, the key stream. Normally, if your stream cipher is well built, it's true. But maybe there is some bias in uh, either the generation of the key stream from the internal state or from when you choose the key to uh, the internal state after the initialization phase. And that give us, uh, basically this two point, give us the two family of experiment that we will run. The experiment to check that there is no bias in the generation of the key stream, basically. And the second experiment to uh, experimentally verify the probability that the good value is in the set X when you run the self referring method. Um, so once we did with this uh, verification, we went back to the paper to understand where the theory was wrong uh, because uh, the verification didn't match what was given uh, in the theory of the fast collision attacks. And uh, basically what we found was that uh, when they present the attack, there is two independent theorem about the output of the self-refined method X. Uh, one where they compute the probability that the good value, uh, well, the good internal state is in the set X. And another which computes the size uh, of X at the end of the self-refined method. And the one about the, the size of the set uh, outputted by the self-refined method is false. Uh, and it's false in such a way that the size of X is always, always underestimated. Uh, that means that basically uh, they obtain at the end probability, well, a, a size, uh, a, a smaller, a smaller uh, set than what uh, you would expect with the probability uh, they uh, claim. Which explains why there is uh, this uh, differences between the experimental value we obtain with uh, the, the experiment and uh, what is cloned. Um, basically, we think that the, the central error in the reasoning is that they assume that there is only one good value for the internal state, which is true, uh, but only when you use enough uh, key stream bits, where, whereas uh, in the attacks they use a very, very small number of key stream bits, something like uh, five or uh, five key stream bits or uh, 20 key stream bits, really, really, they use a really small number of key stream bits, which explain why they have uh, this difference in probability. So to go in more details in the experiment we did, I will first uh, introduce again uh, A51. So it's an old stream cipher that it was used in the GSM uh, standard um, 30 years ago now. Uh, so it's a stream cipher composed of three registers. Um, the clocking, well, it's an asynchronous clocking that are represented with a, the red or arrow. And basically, uh, to obtain the, the key stream at the end, you add the free, uh, the last three bit, well, the, the last bit of the register. So in the in the attack, in the fast near collision attack against uh, A51, basically what's going on is that uh, you're searching uh, 15 bits of uh, internal state knowing only uh, two bits, two consecutive bits of the key stream. So the 15 bits uh, that you're searching are in deep blue, basically. And uh, that corresponds to the, to the first two um, bits of key streams that will be output. So when you run the self uh, referring methods, you obtain a set X, um, when you follow the claim of the paper, uh, of 7,835 elements for the 15 variables, uh, with a probability that it has a, a good value of more than 99%. And in fact, if you watch the attack in more details, uh, 
Uh, they run the self-refined method with the first and second keystream bits, the pair of the first and second keystream bit. The pair of the second and third keystream bit, um, the pair of the third and fourth keystream bit, and uh, another pair, well, the next pair after that. And they merge all the results. Resulting, uh, the, at the end, they obtain a set X of 2 to the power 16.6 candidates, about, for the 33 bits uh, of the core parts that are in blue in the figure. Uh, the, this uh, 33 uh, bits uh, allow you to compute the five first uh, keystream bits. And what's interest us in, the, in this case is that the set X at the end is a lot, lot smaller than what you would expect, uh, which will, which, well, what you expect is to have a, a set of uh, 2 to the power 28 about. So we did the experiment. So first the experiment to check if there was a bias in the generation of the key stream. So when you have a five a given value for the five bit of key stream, there is exactly, there are exactly 2 to the power 28 configuration of the core part that will generate this key stream. So there was no bias here. And the second experiment we did, we ran, it was to uh, check if there was a, a bias in the initialization process. So basically what we did was we sample at random a key on an IV, we run the initialization phase, and after that we count the number of time each uh, configuration of the core part is uh, reached. So we did uh, 2 to the power 36 initialization, and what we obtain at the end uh, is uh, the free uh, graphic here. So in blue, you have uh, what's happening when uh, you directly sample at random your 33 bits of, uh, cor of the core part. Um, in the middle, you have what's happening when you measure the same thing in the, well, about the core part, when you choose a 54 bits key and an IV at random, uh, 54 bits key because uh, it was one of the way um, A51 is used in a, in a GSM protocol. And in the right, uh, it's what's happening when um, you sample at random a key of a, a 64 bits uh, with an IV. So it's simply uh, the same. At one point, we wanted to to use a key square law to to verify that it was the same distribution, but it cost too much. And uh, since we think that if such a bias was uh, existed for uh, f one, it will uh, it would already be uh, um, it will already be known. So we didn't go in more this uh, for this experiment. The second experiment is uh, to refute the claim about the probability uh, from, of the fast near collision attacks. So basically what we do is that we choose uh, five bits of keystream. We run the self-refined method with this five bits of keystream. We obtain at the end the, the, uh, the, the set X with uh, two to the power 16.6 values. And only now we will choose the, the key and the IV. We will run the initialization process such that uh, the five first bit of keystream will match with the chosen uh, bit of keystream. And we will check if uh, the core part is in the set X of candidate, of candidate or not. So we run it a lot of times. And the experimental probability is that the good, basically the good state are in the set X at the end is two to the power minus 11.4, which is a lot less than the, than what is claimed by the fast near collision attacks. Once we did the, this experiment, we went back to the code uh, given for the attack uh, against A51, which normally was supposed to test some components of the attack. Uh, we found some bugs in this code, so we correct them, we add a for loop and a, just a simple counter to 
well, compute the probability of the self refining method at well, yes the, the, the probability that the good value is in the set after the self refining method with the code of the given by the attack and uh, when we run that we obtain results that are in line with your theory and not the theory of the fastener collision attacks which explain uh, which may explain the following statement by the author whereas they did the experiment and almost all the results uh, match the theory so we did the same verification with a grain. So it's a e stream a stream cipher. A, yeah, it's a stream cipher of the e stream portfolio, uh, composed by uh, 80 bits uh, LFSR and uh, 80 bits NFSR, and the um, output is computed with a function. While the key stream bit are computed with a function H star. Uh, we did the first uh, family of experiment to check there was no bias in the generation of the key stream um, by uh, taking uh, sampling at random a key and IV and verifying that the, the core part at the end is uh, uniformly distributed, which is the case. And after that, we did the simple experiment to refute the, the probability claim of the fast near collision attack, we took, uh, we choose a value for the key stream, we run the self refined method, we obtain a set uh, X at the end, and only now we take a random key and IV that match the key stream, and we check after the initialization if the core part is in the set X. It gives us the experimental probability close to uh, well, 55%, which is a lot less than the claim probability uh, from the fast near collision attacks. In particular, uh, the overall complexity of the attack against grain V1 should be increased by a factor of 2 to the power 40 about, um, meaning that at the end, uh, the attack the fast near collision attack against grain is slower than the exhaustive search. Uh, as a conclusion, the fast near collision attacks are not fast attacks. Uh, they're slower than the exhaustive search for grain. And for uh, A51, they're at most as fast as the, as the attack by Golish uh, 25 years ago. As, uh, to explain why they are not as fast as claiming the original uh, papers. Um, it's, it's because there is an error in the analysis on the complexity of the self refined method. And uh, we, contact, uh, we contacted the author uh, about uh, this. And um, Mayer was uh, okay with uh, what we did. Basically, he agreed with uh, what we presented. Uh, Zonga, however, uh, disagree with uh, what I just showed you. So we agree to disagree. And I think uh, if Zhang want to to prove uh, once and for all that the fast near collision attack are really fast attack, the easiest uh, way to do so is to implement completely the attack against a fair one. Normally it should run on, the, on your office computer. So thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, you can send emails to the author, me, Pierre-Alain, or Patrick.